Hi, Frank. Hey, all good? Yep, everything's good. Uh, we're currently sitting at six minutes to the hour. All right. Well, tonight I'm going to cover a few things. I think, um, I think with all the changes going on, I think it'd be good to start with that because there's obviously historic things happening, such as the common um, people reclaiming a courthouse. There's obviously lots of turmoil in the Middle East, and the cost cutting is accelerating. So we need to talk about all those things just to put a context on it. Yeah, it's a good about, idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just think I just think these calls. We're going to get into the, the nitty gritty, but I also think it's important just so that everyone is aware that we're aware of these things and 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 how it's fitting with what we're doing. I want to talk a bit about then into the executor letter approach. I want to give share some insights as to why there is merit in this particular option providing the knowledge of why it works is clear. It doesn't have to be the letter that's been circulated. It certainly can be a lot simpler. So I want to talk about that and judges' oaths and the progress of the ecclesiastical deeds and, and the new updated version, how that's going. I, I do want to talk about the groups underway and the fact that we've, we've now got the codes handed across to the health group, uh, food and drugs code starting, the agricultural code's been worked on. So I want to talk about that and, and then groups that we do definitely need some support on now, like IT, um, the energy group, getting them going, they're already there, but getting them active on this. I do want to talk about enforcement. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I also want to talk about um, progress on communities, names in the structure that we discussed the other night, particularly about important changes. And yeah. I want to end on this idea of just people's underlining anxiety towards the future. And I want, to, I want to finish that off given that we're heading towards Easter, just talking about what the powers of be themselves are only just starting to learn about what their fathers and grandfathers did last century. So there's a fair bit to cover and we'll hopefully be, you know, within the hour, but probably, probably 70 minutes. Okay, well, uh, I mean, we're rolling, so uh, anytime we'll wait a couple of minutes. Uh, it's currently 8.57 uh, to the hour. Uh, again, is the, one of the important things of these open calls, uh, for those who are listening and also for those who will listen later, is that we're constantly rolling forward. Uh, wouldn't you agree, Frank? Absolutely. I mean, we're learning all the time on how to structure things and and keeping in mind that we're dealing with entrenched models that have been in place in some cases at least for 500 years and others for, for more than 2,000 years. Correct, yeah. So, um, well, we'll give it a couple more minutes and then we'll start. Yeah, I mean, a lot going on in the news. I mean, it, it shows you that, uh, you, you know, is even with uh, w without widespread information, there's definitely a change in the collective awareness of people in general. And uh, it's it's starting to uh, surmount its way into the news. Uh, I mean, this, this court thing in, in Britain was very interesting. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah. you know... <clears throat> When when people come to listen to this and they come from different groups, you find you find this is a common feature where people almost all, not always I was going to say always but almost almost always that there's almost this obsession in having to make the universe surround them. The, the reality is that we're all connected. The reality is that things are happening independent of us, and when we acknowledge that, that should give us encouragement. We don't need everything to be directed back to Eucadia. Eucadia is just one part of a bigger thing that's happening. It's an important part, but it's just one part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so very important. Yep. Well, mm -hmm. let, let, why, don't we, uh, why don't we start? Absolutely. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the open call for University of Eucadia on the Wednesday night 9 p.m. calls. 
Uh, I'm Brian T. Collins, and we're here with your host, uh, Frank O'Collins. Uh, tonight's going to be quite a jam-packed uh, uh, program with uh, the first hour. Frank will be uh, speaking about latest updates and uh, news and also some incredible insights uh, into uh, history and also in terms of moving forward. And uh, the last hour is going to be question and answer. So we ask for those who are on the call is uh, come to question and answer time to get into the queue for asking questions to Frank. And you do that by dialing star eight. That's star eight. Uh, Frank, uh, again, is wonderful to, uh, to be here again. And, and there's it's such an exciting time. So why don't you take it away? Yeah, thanks, Brian. Thank all of you who have come on to listen live tonight. And I also extend my thanks to those that will be downloading this call later if they don't have time to be on now. And you can find the recording of this call and the other calls on the University of Eucadia, http uh, university.eucadia.info. And of course, you can find these calls on TalkShoot. As Brian just outlined, and thanks, Brian, there are a number of topics tonight some very exciting topics tonight that I want to raise. I'm very mindful that one of the motives, one of the ongoing motives for many of you that are interested in inquiring about Eucadia is the very real issues you face against the present system, whether it be the threat of your home, whether it be the loss of property, whether it be the taking of your children, whether it be loved ones in prison, whether it be any number of these real crises in our lives, that this is for many a pressing issue that un or issues until they are de decided, until there is some resolution. Some of the broader things we discuss are, while interesting, of less importance. I'm very mindful of that. And so tonight we will be talking again about the progress that we are making in supporting each and every one of you that is facing these kinds of issues. At the same time, everything we are doing must, I believe, remain in focus to the fact that the system, whether it be the private bar guilds, is more than 200 years since they were called the Bar Association. If we talk, them, talk to them as the guilds, they've been around for more than 500 years. If we're talking about the Roman cult, we're talking about a system that's been around for more than seven to 800 years. If we're talking about a parasitic mind that views the rest of the world as animals and property, that system's been around for more than 1,700 years. And if we're talking about blood sacrifice and the concept of worshipping demons, and the concept of tricking and lying in public. We're talking about a system around Mithraism that's more than 2,300 years old. So these are very, very long time frames. These issues have been around for our fathers, our grandfathers and mothers for many generations have been facing imminent dangers. We just happen to be a generation where incredible things are happening. So whatever I, and whenever I talk about history, I do so with in mind the importance that you all have, the emphasis that you all have in seeing these pressing issues today resolved. Now tonight I want to cover the, the following key things. I want to talk about some of the changing times, but I'm not going to go over it because there is plenty of commentary out there about these changing times, but I do want to put it in context. The second I want to talk about is the updates we're doing in terms of remedies in land, in ecclesiastical deeds, and some of the new areas that we're adding in, such as recognizing the value of the executor letter. And I'll be talking about the executor approach, not the letter that's been circulated around, but a different, simpler, clearer approach that is based on the knowledge of why this can work and why it should work if they follow their own laws. 
I'm going to talk about the groups underway and how the handover that I've promised is taking place, is happening. I want to talk about the uh, gratefulness of those groups that have already started in areas like health, in areas like food and drugs, and encourage each and every one of you to, if you have the time, to take an interest in other groups that will be starting, in particular IT, if you have IT skills, in education, environment, and energy. I want to talk about the pressing and constant question that people have in terms of enforcement. And tonight, there is a relevance for talking about enforcement because it will be leading to a subject when we talk about some important naming and structures in the way that Eucadia is structured. And understanding from the present system what they place their emphasis on. Is it on guns, metal, military, or is it on something more esoteric? I want to, I want to share that with you because it is a very, very important understanding. I want to talk about the progress of the communities and the money system. And then I want to end on some insights that we haven't really covered before. We've covered partly, but I would like to cover it, and that is in the light of the history we're in at the moment, in the light of we're heading towards Easter and Passover, this pressing question of uncertainty of the future, I want to talk about things that were done last century in an understanding that the New World Order was brought in last century and that they already blew up their world and that the sons are only waking up and the daughters are only waking up today to realise that the fathers and their grandfathers already pressed the button on Armageddon. Armageddon has already come and been. You can't have two, two Armageddons. <laughs> you can have criminal action, but from a, from a faith, you can't destroy a covenant twice. You can't flog a dead horse. So I'm going to talk about that because it's important to keep that in context. So there's some big, big things to talk about. Changing times, updates in terms of remedies, the groups underway, enforcement, names and structures, progress on communities, and World War III, New World Order, and the fact that they've already blown up their covenant. So let me start with changing times. I think... A hubris and an ego thing that many groups do over and over is try and put a spin on events and say, look at me, look at us, look what we're doing. One of the things that I've been very clear on, and I'm glad that this has continued, is we are not keeping track like a tally board of successes or, for that matter, failures on any of the remedies and discussions that we provide. That is not our purpose. If, if we were into that game, then I would say that the knowledge and our approach is disingenuous. We're not selling a brand here. I'm not asking anyone to believe Eucadia, uh, to buy it and, and, and stand there and, and testify that you know, they, they love it and that they'll use it like some clothes washing material. It, we, we're, we're dealing with knowledge. We're dealing with sharing knowledge, sharing experience, we're dealing with awareness. We're dealing with respect. We're trying to get out of this, this mindset that builds competing silos between remedies. If a remedy works, then let us look at it. And tonight, you're going to hear me talk about the executor letter, not the letter itself as it is, but the idea. And you're going to hear me talk about how this is and has potential if it's used with the knowledge of why it works. So Eucadia is not about separating, dividing, conquering. It is about the promotion of ideas, the promotion of competence, and the promotion that nothing can change unless you, others you know, and your community in general stand up. Stand up and let us not remain in a state of being victims. Unless that changes, nothing will change. That is the heart of why we're doing and what we're doing. And it's why, in eight months' time, I will no longer be in this role and I will be like you. I will be at the end of the queue. I will support, but I will have no and can never have any official role. 
Because unless you see in the ideas that is Eucadia, and Eucadia is nothing more than an idea, 